In this video, I'm going to show you how to measure indoor carbon dioxide levels, uh, which is a good metric used when determining indoor air quality. You can do this relatively cheap for about $50 or so. What you're going to need is you're going to need these carbon dioxide color metric gas detection tubes. I link to the exact ones on my blog, which I'll put in the video description. A hundred milliliter syringe, uh, or you can use one of these professional pumps, which are great, but they cost 200 to $400, depending on the brand and which pump you use. So for most cases, you can get away just fine with your standard 100 milliliter syringe if you're just using it to measure indoor air quality and not, not using this for a client or something. Carbon dioxide is just one component of a much larger indoor air quality picture. So if you just measure carbon dioxide, it's not gonna give you a comprehensive view of your indoor air quality. There's other factors that are involved too. The other factors you should consider when evaluating indoor air quality is your total VOC levels, mold, mycotoxins, allergens such as pollen, smoke, ozone, radon, Another common confusion with people is the difference between carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Um, carbon monoxide is much more poisonous in lower concentrations than carbon dioxide. A lot of people who are not familiar um, or not technical savvy sometimes get the two confused. Both carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide are odorless they're colorless gases. They're both produced from anything containing carbon being burned, such as wood, fuels, natural gas, coal. Uh, they both contain carbon and oxygen. Carbon monoxide is a result of oxygen star combustion in improperly ventilated fuel burning equipment, such as a water heater or a furnace, which can burn propane, natural gas, oil, uh, carbon monoxide doesn't occur naturally in the atmosphere where carbon dioxide is present in the atmosphere. For that reason, people can tolerate carbon dioxide better than they can tolerate carbon monoxide. The OSHA permissible exposure limit for carbon monoxide is 50 parts per million, where carbon dioxide is 5,000. Um, so our bodies can tolerate carbon dioxide much better than carbon monoxide and poisoning is rare from carbon dioxide where it's much more common with carbon monoxide and carbon monoxide is actually a flammable gas where carbon dioxide is not. So now let's get into actually testing enough of the background on it. We're not going to use this hand pump for the test because generally most people watching this video are not professionals and they don't want to go out and spend $200 to $400 on a hand pump, they're probably going to use once, so it really isn't necessary for what most people watching this video are trying to do. So let's stick with the two items you'll need. These carbon dioxide gas detection tubes, uh, the ones I'm using are from Ray Systems. They're $35 plus uh, shipping for 10 of them. I've already used a few of them, you can see. Um, it's a pretty good deal. You can get 10 tests for that. So you can measure in different parts of your house at different times of the day, different days of the week, you know, after, after you ventilate or before you ventilate to get different data points. How these are used is they have a set amount of sample volume air that you need to pump through them um, within a sample time frame. And what will happen is the color will change of the tube to indicate the parts per million of, of the concentration of the gas, which is carbon dioxide. So let me um, get this out of the way and we'll do a test here. To do a test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break off both ends of this tube. Uh, Typically on the professional pumps, they come with a tip breaker, but you can use pliers or you can, you can score it with um, needle nose pliers and then cut it, cut it off. 
Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this tube into the uh, tubing of the syringe with the arrow, the airflow arrow, pointing in the direction of the air going into the pump. So let me go ahead and break off this tip. So I'm going to use my professional pump um, tip breaker, but you could use, as I mentioned before, just pliers or something. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure the syringe is fully closed, the stopper is all the way up. I'm going to stick the airflow direction um, of the tube into the syringe tubing. And when I'm doing this test, it's important to make sure that you try to keep it away from where you're breathing because if you breathe too close to it, it's a very sensitive and it's going to pick up that carbon dioxide that you're exhaling and it's going to bias the test and give you a false reading higher than, than really what your general indoor air carbon dioxide level is. Okay, so make sure this is in frame. What I'm going to try to do is it's kind of hard to pull this stopper out. What happens is on these professional pumps, I'm going to put my finger on it to show if there was a vacuum, you can just pull it and wait. And um, there's an indicator on the end that will turn white. And so you just set it, the pump down and wait which is really nice, but with the syringe, you're gonna to have to do this all manually, so. All right, so I'm gonna pull on this here and start this test, start the measurement. I'm gonna to try to breathe away from it. It's kind of tricky to hold this under a vacuum, so what I normally do is I kind of do that. And this is gonna take a little bit probably about a minute to two minutes. Um, once some of this vacuum is relieved, I'll try to get more. All right, I'm getting to the point where I can now actually hold it at about 100. I like to try to jam my thumb in here so I can <laughs> hold it. It's much harder to do with without the professional pump, but I'm going to try to hold this at 100. I'm going to wait until I feel that there's no vacuum and basically wait until this plunger doesn't want to be pulled back in naturally. Okay, we're getting about there. When I let go, you kind of got to overshoot it a little bit to try to get it to pull air through. Um, we're getting close. I'm pulling past the 100 because I'm trying to create a higher vacuum in it to try to get that air pulling through. Um, and then once I feel the pressure going down, I'm going to make sure I don't go over 100. It's, it's very hard to get it exact when you're using a syringe. Um, this is much, you're basically using this to get a rough idea of your indoor CO2 levels. The tube itself has plus or minus 10% uh, accuracy, but when using this syringe, you're probably, it's probably going to bump that up. All right, we're about there. It's kind of staying around there. So it's holding at 100, so looks like looks like we're good. We can remove the tube. Alright, I'm going to try to reposition the camera so we can get a close-up of the tube. 
All right, so it can be kind of tricky sometimes to measure, let's see. Um, you normally want to, where the point you want to take the measure in is normally kind of where the gradient, there'll be a gradient on the tail end of the, the color change. And you want to kind of measure near the end of that gradient. Um, this one is looking like this is right around 500, possibly. Let me see if we can get closer and camera will focus. Um, maybe a little more, maybe like 600 parts per million. All right, I put a flashlight on the top here. I'm holding a flashlight over this, so kind of makes it a little easier to see. It looks like it's right around 600, uh, 500 to 600. I mean, you can consider that 500, but uh, there's a little bit of gradient. Not sure. I would say I would say 500 to 600, probably closer to 500, 550 uh, parts per million, which is good for Endura quality. It's fine. Um, the commercial standard ASHRAE standards right around the a thousand. Um, that's not. There's no health risk with that level. It's more of a uh, once you start getting above a thousand parts per million, you can start kind of detecting body odor of people. It's kind of a good indicator of smell. So I hope this video was helpful. On my blog, I have a post on how to check your indoor formaldehyde levels using color metric detector tubes, just like this tube, but you have to use a different pump setup, which has to, it's an electric pump that needs to run for 30 minutes. So the setup's a little more expensive, but that helps give another data point for indoor air quality. Um, the equipment needed to do the formaldehyde test is still cheaper than sending off um, a test tube to some of the some of the test places. Some of them they they're pretty cheap for a, one of the passive samplers, but um, some places are up to I think one hundred fifty dollars or so per sample.